My name is Mike Murphy. I'm the Head of Cartography in University College Cork and the Geography Department. We are here at the Great Famine Voices Roadshow in Quinnipiac in the United States and I'm about to talk about a project that we've been working on in the Geography Department and in collaboration with the Department of Heritage about the Great Irish Famine Online project. It all started years ago for us in geography really when we started to um, experiment with computerization and computerizing the, um, using GIS, geographic information systems, mapping packages to um, we we'll say, for instance, what you do is that you, you, you generate the boundaries of areas which were civil parishes. These were parishes that were used during the 1800s for the data collection of the census. And attached to those were the census themselves of 1841 and 51, which were the two relevant census for the famine period. So we computerized the maps and we captured the data with a guy by the name of Charlie Roach, who was excellent. And we design. produced from that in, or at least it formed the, the heart of the mapping of the Atlas of the Great Irish Famine which has been very successful and we're delighted with it. Um, from that then, of course, we had this great, I suppose, this huge database on our computers in the geography department. And thanks to the support of the university and also the government and particularly the heritage department, um, we, were, we embarked a few years ago on making all this data and all these maps available online. So basically what we're doing here now is that we have put it online with the Department of Heritage and Cultural Heritage in Gwaeltoft and um, we launched it last year in UCC with a family commemoration in UCC, two launches specifically. Um, and it basically is a way for people to explore their own areas, see the statistics, see we have about 20 different categories. We have population, male, female, we have first, second, third and fourth class houses, we have four to five different types of occupation from, we'll say, if you had a vested interest that you were wealthy enough, or your own labour, your own means, and also education levels, education of English, of course, they didn't actually take Irish um, in the census. And I suppose one of the challenges was to make it accessible and make it easy to understand really to kind of not so much simplify it but as we all know in this modern age of technology people have only about 30 seconds of concentration before they drift off so we need to make it as as i suppose easy to explore as possible and um it has been very successful it won an award um, a technology award from the department, from the, the civil servant, civil service um, awards last year, and I'm here to demonstrate it at the conference and give a paper on it, um, which will be tomorrow as it transpires. Uh, we're exploring here the Great Irish Famine Online website. Um, it's a joint project between UCC and the Department of Cultural Heritage in the Gwaeltoct. And basically what it is, is that it is the uh, stats from the 1841 and 51 census put online. And like the census, you have the introduction, population, families, housing, occupation, education. And for instance, for the area strokes down here, the way the system works is that you can find your area that you're interested in, and you can click on the town. We have both towns and rural areas. I'll show you the rural areas in a minute. And the strokes down here, you just click on strokes town, and you'll see the statistics for strokes town, and this is just for the families and housing in 1841. So you see your 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 menu here that shows you the housing, four class housing in 1841 you have 276 and in 1851 you have 246. So that's just the towns. So we just looked at the parishes now. So you go over to your rural section, click on your rural tab and you'll see your parishes coming up. If you go out to, we say, to the full extent and see the whole country you can very clearly now see the actual number of forecast houses and this would be in 1851 um, because there's a slider bar here that you can see and by moving that you transform from 1841 to 51. So you click on your slider, you pull it across the map and you see the transformation and this is the map on the left of 1841 appearing. So the darker areas here show where the civil parishes, which is what the date is based on, where your civil parishes were over 65% of the housing stock of the families are living in four class accommodation, more accurately. Then if you zoom into an area that you want to research more on, you just click your positive up here and you zoom away. You can see now, for instance, that the actual names of the civil parishes start appearing. 
Again, you have your slider. And once more, these, these areas of heavy red here have over 65% of the families living in four-class accommodation. If you click on a civil parish, again, you get your statistical breakdown. And you have your pie chart at the bottom showing that. So the yellow areas here, if you float over them, and once again, you can see for this civil parish, you had 600, 563 families living in four-class accommodation. You get your slider then. And you slide across the parish, you see the transformation of the map itself, but now you also see the transformation of the statistics. And for that parish again, um, you can see the statistical changes. So once again, you click on your parish, that's your figure for 51 here, which is Ninety families, pull your slider across the parish and you'll see the figure for the same parish for 41. Float over the section of the pie chart and it's 563 families for 41. So that's just a quick example of how the, the system operates. Um, it's fairly intuitive and it's, it's the idea is that people will explore their own areas for all these different categories. We have about 20 different sections, population male, female, 41 and 51, and total number of course, um, four different classes of houses, first, second, third and fourth, and the families living in them, types of families, occupation from their own manual labours to uh, manufacturing and so on. Education was actually just for read, write English, so you have males, females that could read, only uh, that could rewrite or that couldn't read or write. So illiterate, which is the term they used. So that's it. Um, thank you very much.